But now for something completely different. Uh, so far, we've been talking about IoT in terms of uh, terrestrial. Um, but now we're going to talk about non-terrestrial networks. And uh, Matt alluded to some of that in his presentation. Uh, so who better to sort of... Uh, guide us through that is one of those new LEO uh, satellite operators, um, Skylo, and Parf Trevedi uh, is going to tell us all about it and educate us. So, Parf. Thank you, Shane, and thank you to the GSMA for uh, having me over to talk to you all about NTN. Just a quick show of hands, how many of you all were familiar with the concept of non-terrestrial networks before today? Okay, awesome. I'll skip the 101 then. Uh, but yeah, we're, I'm really excited to present to you the work that we've been doing in NTN, the opportunity that we see. Uh, quite frankly, it's uh, something that I'm incredibly excited about because it finally allows the satellite and the cellular industries to converge in the most efficient way possible. And frankly, in a way that requires zero change in customer behavior as you know it today for IoT or for consumer devices. And, and that's incredibly exciting to me. Um, our service, uh, we're a global NTN service operator. Uh, we're completely software defined. So we are agnostic to Leo or Geo. Um, and we have partnerships with satellite operators who give us spectrum. Uh, we wear two hats at Skylo. We are a network technology developer. So we develop the RAN, the core, the OSS, PSS systems, the entire nine yards that you need to run uh, a global MNO. On top of that, we are also a service operator. Uh, and so we run the network uh, ourselves. And we partner very closely with the world's largest chipset companies, Qualcomm, MediaTek, Sony, uh, and others are all partners to us in enabling release 17 of the 3GPP standards into their existing IoT as well as on their 5G chipsets. So to kick off, the motivation for NTN really came from the need for cost-effective IoT connectivity outside of where people live. Because frankly, machines and sensors are most valuable where people aren't. Uh, and the way that, so that problem was solved in the past was through very expensive satellite solutions, which required extra hardware. And that resulted in uh, a cost, a total cost of ownership for, for a satellite that just resulted in a very small market. Uh, with release 17 of the 3GPP standards, uh, we have an opportunity for the same device to do both cellular and satellite. And that means you're, you're buying a cellular modem. You're no longer buying a, a satellite modem. You know, you're, you're installing cellular RF front ends and cellular antennas in your device. You're no longer thinking about the design of an IoT device to be compatible with satellite. You're just designing it for cellular and we're making sure that it's certified on our network. So we needed a way to, to minimize and eliminate changes in behavior for folks to access this, uh, this capability. And that's exactly what we've done. And the reason I'm excited about this personally is Solving for this unlocks a tremendous amount of potential across industries. This is going to have a profound impact, uh, whether you talk about maritime, whether you talk about security, whether you talk about transportation. And frankly, even, even yourselves, everyone in this room is going to access NTN. My prediction is everyone is going to have a phone in their pocket in the next 18 months, which is going to have an NTN capability natively installed in it. Um, let me share some stories with you that I've come across recently that I've been involved with personally, uh, which excite me. I just came back from Jakarta last week, uh, where I had an opportunity to meet uh, fishermen as well as IoT solution developers who were developing uh, uh, platforms that fishermen transact on. And it was surprising to me that there's more than 2 million fishing vessels, less than 20 meters in size, that go completely radio dark when they're out at sea. I mean, they have no form of connectivity and the two-way radios are quite useless uh, and they can't afford to buy a satellite phone. Um, but the government can't track them or keep them safe. So every week, fishermen in Indonesia, India uh, are losing their lives to completely controllable things like weather events. Uh, they're apprehended it's in, in some ways by neighboring countries. And there's a global incentive structure in place to report uh, catch. Uh, which can now be done if you have an NTN-capable solution on your boat. Uh, and seen from the fisherman's perspective, I mean, if you can uh, contemplate what this looks like at scale, the inability to have data at sea 
results in a massive amount of challenges for these communities. There's millions of people employed in agriculture, in maritime, in, in, in all of these kind of industries where they just simply don't have connectivity. Over just the course of trials with Skylo in the Indian Ocean, we were able to rescue two dozen lives in less than six months. And I feel that at scale, we can do a lot better. I think that we can save millions of lives over this decade with, with NTN. Uh, that's why it's the most transformative thing to happen in the telecom industry from my perspective. Um, when we think about other industries, just to draw parallels to, uh, to, to fisheries, remote workers in mining uh, are a good example of, of personnel who are constantly at risk. Uh, they need a way to stay safe, as you heard in the earlier panel talking about personnel safety. They need a way to stay connected and also transact. You know, we found that, uh, for instance, providing fishermen this capability, by the second week that they had this, they were actually selling their catch using NTN at sea. So th their catch was sold before they returned to shore. I think we're going to find the same thing happen in agriculture and in mining and in other industries where digital payment solutions, digital platforms, and transactions are going to happen over NTN, where these folks are able to order raw materials and conduct business over connectivity that they never had before. And my view is that, sure, they can install private LTE networks in some places where it makes sense. But in a vast majority of these environments, it may be cost prohibitive to install a new network on the ground. And that's why NTN makes a lot of sense. All this while, we have insured people, we have insured machines, and now we have an, in, uh, a, an opportunity to insure connectivity with NTN. And that's why I'm excited about it. Well, to enable these opportunities, we had to do something remarkable. We had to put satellite connectivity in form factors that the world had never seen before. Uh, and also at cost points, at price points on a recurring basis, as well as on a hardware basis, that were just unprecedented. And this took a, a village to accomplish in terms of an ecosystem. Um, we partnered with MediaTek, with Qualcomm, and with Sony and others, including module makers, device makers, to make this possible. And if you think about uh, uh, remote workers or you think about, frankly, even the average person going hiking, they needed a solution to stay safe and to stay connected. And that's what we delivered on earlier this year in partnership with uh, Motorola and with the Bullet Group. We made it possible for our software-defined network to connect with existing cellular chipsets without requiring any kind of expensive modification to the hardware, frankly, any modification at all. This is an example of a wearable that's now available in REI. It's available online in AT&T stores, and it's available in Costco. You could buy one today and get yourself connected to Skylo's network. Um, and this allows not just consumers, but also enterprises with the ability for two-way messaging, SOS, uh, any kind of location sharing activity in a two-way fashion, right? Uh, so you can stay safe, let others know where you are, and also communicate. And the experience is uh, native texting. So this pairs over Bluetooth to, frankly, any phone that you have. And you can also carry this independently on your backpack. Everything you can do on an NB IoT network today terrestrially, you can do over satellite using our network. And that is going to continue to evolve with time. But that's the capability that we have commercially launched across two continents today uh, in partnership with not just device makers, uh, but also with carriers such as Deutsche Telekom, whom we announced our early adopter program with uh, last week in Cologne, uh, as well with, uh, we announced uh, this morning with uh, Telefonica Group. Uh, and we're continuing to expand our carrier partnerships as well as partnerships with IoT solution providers such as Emnify. Uh, and just to highlight how constraint of a use case we can adapt satellite inside, Probably the smartphone is, is the best example of a constrained use case. Uh, and I wanted to highlight that our chipset partners are porting NB, NTN onto the 5G modem as well, uh, which means that smartphones are all, already have the native capability uh, to connect and communicate over the satellite network. Um, this is fully 3GPP release 17 compliant. It does not require any... Um, unnatural acts such as pointing the phone at a particular point in sky. It's a very natural texting experience. Uh, and we, we will find the same experience translate to enterprise IoT use cases. You really don't have to think about how your devices 
oriented or installed as long as it is outdoors and has access to the open sky. That's all we ask. And the reason I'm highlighting this is because it's a constraint example. I mean, think about the most ex extreme example for IoT connectivity. The one I can think of is probably a printed asset tracking label. And we have successfully connected a label that looks exactly like that directly over our network. That's a label that was designed for cellular. It was never designed for satellite. And that's, that's really exciting because again, we've eliminated another change in behavior. This type of asset tracker or asset tag makes it possible for you to make a connected bike helmet with crash detection. It makes it possible for you to put connectivity on every container. If you're a company like Maersk, you might have 40 million dry containers that are untracked today. Uh, and importantly, this capability also unlocks automotive in a very important way. So we're not just talking about mountain bikes, but frankly, we're also talking about your car. Satellite SOS is already here in the iPhone. All the automakers, for instance, in Europe need a solution with, with a high enough SOS response SLA that only NTN can deliver on. And we're really excited to partner with the automotive industry and frankly, with many of you all here to in enable this in the cars of the current and the cars of the future. And it's not just for SOS, frankly, it's also for telemetry data. I was driving through Utah a couple of weeks ago and um, I didn't have connectivity. I couldn't find the nearest EV charging station for my electric vehicle. And that's a very pragmatic use case for where NTN can deliver crucial data at a point where you need it the most. Speaking about uh, constraints of operating in these remote environments, uh, think, about, uh, think about agricultural examples where you have soil moisture sensors or where you have cattle tracking uh, applications with tags that are in extremely remote environments. And uh, there's companies today, I, in fact, I, I noticed one here, that have cattle tracking tags that are connected over cellular, but cellular has limited connectivity. You're not gonna have farmers build out LTE networks or 5G networks just to solve for an individual use case like this. It's too expensive. Um, and what we've done is demonstrated that using a 300 milliamp power battery, which is typical for your smartwatch, um, and using the in-situ antenna that's already present, frankly, in your smartwatch or in, the, in that uh, uh, cattle tracking tag, which is just just as small. Um, we st stress tested this solution relative to cellular and we found that we can send a thousand messages over cellular using that 300 milliamp hour battery, uh, over satellite, sorry. Uh, and the battery degradation relative to cellular was just 5% when using satellite. And if you think about it, that kind of makes sense because when you're not connected, your device is constantly in cell search mode. Uh, and over here, you're using all of the low power uh, benefits of NB-IoT to connect directly over satellite. Uh, and we have done some incredible things in the back end uh, with our chipset partners and with uh, our own uh, company uh, to make this extremely power efficient. Uh, and by the way, all of the modes that you are familiar with in a terrestrial context, like EDRX and PSM, are enabled on our network today. Um, and that's why it unlocks all of these use cases without uh, changes in behavior. We already have partners who are deploying this solution in uh, many different industries. Frankly, too many for me to name or count uh, today. Uh, Qualcomm, for instance, has uh, launched a solution. They're both a, cust uh, both a partner as well as a customer of ours, and they've launched a, uh, an impressive IoT suite uh, for industries like utilities where you need a very simple solution for detecting when your electricity pole line has been downed or not. I'm from California and we're constantly plagued by these forest fires, which are preventable. Um, these are examples of where the customer, like PG&E, no longer has to think about a separate SKU for where they're deploying cellular versus where they're deploying satellite. It is the exact same low-cost, consistent solution across the board. Right. Um, and frankly, we can do this because we stand on the shoulders of giants. Um, we have done this in partnership with uh, not just Qualcomm, but also module makers who are already available today in the market. So if you're an IoT developer, uh, you can receive Skylo connectivity through modules that you're already familiar with. Uh, so just to name a couple, uh, we're really excited to see Murata come out with uh, Skylo on the 1SC module. Uh, we spoke about this yesterday with Emnify. 
uh, but this is an extremely low power uh, uh, dual mode module, it's a hybrid module, so over cellular it will connect using CADM uh, or NB IoT as the case may be, and over satellite it will connect over the Skylos network. All of that switching logic between cellular and satellite is transparent and seamless to you. It is just like roaming between two terrestrial networks. We've made that switching logic completely transparent uh, and seamless. Uh, so you'll never notice when you go out of cellular, go into satellite, you'll receive the same kind of capabilities across both networks. Uh, but just to add, we're not currently doing CATM or 5G speeds over satellite. So do recognize that this is uh, NB-IoT type latency, throughput, uh, all of those uh, characteristics that you would expect over satellite. So just wanted to set realistic expectations for y'all. Uh, also wanted to call out uh, our OEM and ODM partners who are assisting our device customers in launching this in the market. Flextronics is one such example. Um, and uh, frankly, I'd, I'd uh, invite you to learn more about Skylo and how we can work together uh, to help make a dent in your universe. Uh, we're really excited to partner uh, with a number of different companies across both consumer as well as across enterprise IoT. Uh, and the way we go to market is through partners. We uh, partner with the carriers when it comes to IoT uh, solutions. Uh, so if you are already, a, if you're an IoT developer and you see a logo on this slide that uh, is a company that you're re receiving your connectivity solution through, that's the company you should talk to to receive NTN. Again, we're eliminating another change in behavior here because ideally for IoT, you don't want to sign up with multiple different uh, service partners. You want to have a single bill that consolidates cellular and satellite. And that's exactly what we've delivered on. Uh, so again, really excited to work with all of you and glad to connect afterwards, answer any questions that you have. Um, and thank you again, uh, Shane and to the GSMA.